I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are delighted to be with you and we thank you for joining us. We have many, many folks that watch us each and every week and have been for some time, and yet there are no doubt brand new uh, viewers to the program, and we appreciate you watching and trust that you will enjoy the program tonight. My wife and boys will be singing here in just a few minutes, and you will enjoy the song selection this evening, and uh, I believe both songs will be a blessing uh, to you. Let me invite you to the services here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church tomorrow morning. Sunday school begins at 9.30, and church service begins at 10.30. Tomorrow evening, the church service begins at 6 o'clock. We do have a Sunday school class for every age, every grade, and every group, and would love to have you come and be a part of a Sunday school class here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Our heart's desire here at our church is to help every Christian to have a daily walk with God and that our Sunday schools and church services will bring you closer to God and closer to those that are in good and godly relationships in your life. Church helps us to overcome obstacles, helps us to overcome difficulties, helps us to understand God and to understand the trials and the difficulties of life. Uh, sometimes uh, life is very complex and, con and confusing, and uh, the Word of God helps to shine a light on those uh, difficult uh, situations. So we'd love to have you come and be a part of the services right here uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, you may see some of the decorations around me. I'm not sure exactly what the camera angle is right now, but there are uh, American flags up here, and we're decorated pa uh, patriotic. Uh, because we have our National Church Growth Conference coming up starting on Monday evening, and the theme is Restore. I love the word restore, the word restore, the word restoration. Uh, Isaiah said, in his day, none saith restore. And we have in America known two uh, divisions or groups of people that we make reference to. Not everybody fits in the category, but we talk about liberal and we talk about conservative. Now, I would be listed as one of those that are conservative, but when you conserve something, you keep it as it is. When you restore something, you take it back to its original condition. America does not need a conservation movement, but it needs a movement of restoration. It needs a movement of revival. We need to return to the Word of God. We need to return to the behavior that we had of faith in God in the early days of our nation. That is the theme for the conference this year. You are invited to attend the evening services if you would like to register as a delegate and come to the classes and sessions in the daytime, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're certainly welcome to do that, and you can register for the conference online. The evening services are open to the public, anyone and everyone that would like to attend. There are two preachers each evening, and you will enjoy the good singing. You will enjoy the services. You will enjoy the preaching of the Word of God. Dr. Shelton Smith will be preaching with me on Monday night, and how I look forward to hearing Dr. Smith. He's been the editor of The Sword of the Lord now, uh, going on 30 years. Uh, he is in his early 80s, and yet still marching on a very, very sharp and a very uh, bold and, and strong in his work and in his preaching. I'd love for you to hear him along with myself on Monday evening. Tuesday evening, Dr. John Hamlin and William Davis. Wednesday evening uh, will be uh, Brother Chris Fugit and Brother Chris Dallas. Closing out on Thursday evening is my good friend, Dr. John C. Uh, from Frederick, Maryland. Every service, every evening will be a great blessing. <clears throat> The week after the conference, I'll be preaching just on Tuesday night at the Living Hope Baptist Church in Jasper, Indiana, where Brother James Young is the pastor. 
I really look forward to being with Brother Young and the Living Hope Baptist Church. Uh, this is a church that is started by one of the young men from our church here, and we're very excited about what God is using him to do there in Jasper, Indiana. On Thursday evening, I'm sorry, Friday evening, Friday evening, September 27th, I will be in Murfreesboro, Tennessee for the celebrating of the 90-year anniversary of the Sword of the Lord. This is going to be a great and grand event, and you are invited to attend that conference or that special celebration, I should say, and that is on Friday evening. It begins at 6.30, 6.30 on Friday evening, and that is September 27. September 30 and October 1st, I will be at the Bible Baptist Church of Radcliffe, Kentucky. And I look forward to being in that meeting Friday and Saturday. I will be at the Iglesia Bautista Fundamental of Louisville, Texas on a Friday evening and Saturday morning for their annual men's meeting. Monday and Tuesday, September, October 7 and 8, I will be at the Liberty Baptist Church of Bowling Green, Kentucky, October 14 and 15, Lafayette Bible Baptist Church in Wildwood, Missouri. So I look forward. I look forward to being in these places. And if you live in these areas, I would love to have you come. I'd love to meet you and would appreciate you coming and attending the services. Here's my family to sing the first song. I believe tonight be a great blessing to you. A wonderful time is waiting ahead. Just me on the beautiful sunset. I've been redeemed. I'm ready to leave. Just over in heaven, you will find me. Just over in heaven, over in heaven you will find me. I know you'll find me. Walking on streets of gold forever is where I'll be. Shouting the praise of Christ our Lord who freely died for you and me. Just over in heaven, Just over in heaven is where I'll be. In that great place of an ending day. With the many loved ones forever to stay We'll walk and talk, we'll shout and sing Just over in heaven with Christ our King Just over in heaven, Just over in heaven you will find me I know you'll find me Walking on streets of gold forever is where I'll be Shouting the praise of Christ our Lord who freely died for you and me Just over in heaven, Just over in heaven. Is where I'll be. Just over in heaven. Just over in heaven is where I'll be. I'm preaching tonight from the book of 2 Kings in chapter 6. I'm preaching tonight on the subject of things lost, things lost that we should desire to restore. Isn't it a frustrating thing to lose something that you need, especially something that you're in need of right now? Let me read a passage of Scripture that I relate to in so many ways, and you probably will too. Here's the story. 2 Kings 6, the Bible says, And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Now, Elisha and Elijah had a school for young men. It was called a school of the prophets. In this passage of Scripture, the place where they lived was too small for them, and they went to the headmaster Elisha and said, Sir, uh, this place is too straight or it is too small for us. Now, I relate to that uh, because of having a college and having a college dormitory is that this year uh, they uh, were, uh, uh, were full. And uh, we're having to do some remodeling work and really uh, excited about getting that done. But I understand the pressures of having a place that's too small. So here's the answer. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam. And let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye... And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, 
I will go. So he went with him, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Verse number five. But as one was felling a beam, so he cut a tree down, and he was making it straight to make a beam of this tree that he had just cut down, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. What a problem we have here. Uh, This fellow is cutting down a tree. He is making a beam to build a building so that these sons of the prophets uh, would have a place to live and a place to go to school. And while he's just working away and they've recruited their work and they're all gathering their working and If you remember using an axe, and boy, he was just cutting away, and all of a sudden, the axe head flies off the handle, and it goes into the water nearby where they're working. He has two problems. First of all, he has a problem that the axe head has come off the handle, and it's lost in the water. And evidently, this is more than just a small creek where they could walk in and pick up the axe head. This must have been uh, some bit of water there at the Jordan that was deep, and maybe uh, it was dingy or dirty, and he couldn't see it. And so he's lost the tool that he's working with, but to make matters worse, he says... I borrowed this axe from a friend, and he said, not only have I lost it, I can't do my work. He said, I borrowed it from somebody, and boy, am I in trouble. Notice what the Bible says. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. Now this is a miracle, one of Elisha's miracles, uh, to make an axe head uh, that is made of steel uh, that has uh, fell to the bottom of the Jordan River, and he makes the axe head swim to the top. It just floats to the top, and he solves it. Two problems. First of all, he solves the problem of giving the fella the tool back that he needed to cut the trees. And second of all, he solves the problem that when he's finished, he can give it back to the friend that he had borrowed it from. I, uh, uh, I, I relate to this story in so many ways. Uh, losing things is a frustration. Uh, we oftentimes, uh, of course, uh, ladies lose things, men just uh, misplace them. I'm, I'm joking, I'm laughing, right? Men misplace, men don't lose anything, but ladies lose things, and uh, we lose things like our cell phone. Have you ever lost your cell phone and it in your pocket or it in your hand? Uh, have you ever lost your glasses and found them on top of your head? You take reading glasses like this, you know, you put them on, and then you just put them on top of your head, and then you start looking around, you've lost them right there. Uh, we lose our keys, we lose our wallet, we lose uh, tools, and uh, it's, it's, it's a frustrating thing. It's an interesting thing in the Bible, things that are lost things that are lost and things that they look for. This man was upset. He was worried. He was concerned for two reasons. He didn't have a tool to complete the task, and the tool that he had, that he had used uh, was a borrowed tool. As I read through the Bible, there are some things that are lost that they were able to gain back, and there were some things that are lost that they were never found again. I want to say tonight there's some things that we want to really pay attention to that we never lose them because some things that once they're lost, they can never be restored. Uh, Samson lost his power with God. I don't want to lose God's power in my life. It's not something I can do without. I don't want to lose it, but it can be lost. Think of these words, Judges chapter 16 and verse number 20. And he said, I'm sorry, and she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awake out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And one of the saddest statements in all of the Bible is this. 
and he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. What a sad statement. He had lived his life in ways he didn't need God's power because he'd live in, lived in carnality. He had lived in sin. But when the time came that he needed to overcome, he needed a strength beyond his ability, and he cried out to God, he then realized that sometime recently he had lost the presence and power of God and he had lost his strength with God. Now, I don't know about you, but that frightens me. That makes me nervous. That, that concerns me. I don't want to ever lose, uh, uh, and, and I can't lose my salvation, but I can lose God's blessings. I can lose God's power. I can lose the effectiveness of the Holy Spirit in my life if I don't pay attention to how I live my life. Now, when we think of Samson, we think of a really amazing man. He was a good and useful man of God. He was used of the Lord to do a marvelous work for God. And he did what others could not do in the power of the Lord. Samson came to the place that he would not follow counsel up from his parents. And his independence cost him his life. His independence cost him his power with God. Uh, Samson should have never gone down to Delilah's house. Uh, he would not have spent time with her had he not gone down there. He would not have laid his head in her lap. He would not have been enticed uh, and deceived by her lies. Uh, uh, he uh, told her the secret to his power with God, and she took it away. And how sad that he lost his power uh, with God, but he didn't know he had lost it until it was too late. I want to say tonight, dear friend, let's not mess around with the world and the sins of the world to the place uh, that we lose uh, the effectiveness of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. I was visiting with a young man recently, a young man, a very educated man, and uh, he uh, uh, very successful in life, but his relationship with God had sort of been up and down and mostly down. Been in church for several weeks now, and one of the statements he made to me was this. He said, Pastor, when I come to church, I notice that you're always just really excited about being in church. And he said, it is obvious that your relationship with God is the most important thing in your life. He said, I don't have that. I want to have a better, I want to have a closer relationship with God. I want to say, dear friend, tonight, uh, we're going to need the power of God. We're going to need the promises of God. We're going to need the presence of God when we come to times of challenge and times of difficulty in our life. Let's not live in carnality. Let's not live in the pleasures and sins of the world things that are against the word of God, things that are against the heart of God, things that are against the word of God. Let's not live in those things so that we lose the presence and power of an almighty God. You see, uh, in the cold of winter, uh, and I remember growing up, we had mostly wood and coal fires uh, that we warmed by. And uh, we had them in our church when I was a boy. There were four different levels, two, uh, uh, two story buildings, and uh, all four of those levels had a wood or coal stove in them. And I remember you'd back up to that stove, boy, it'd feel so good on a cold morning. You would stand there and you'd get good and warm. But then as you left the stove, you'd begin to cool off and you'd begin to get cold. I remember working in those buildings and helping to build at those buildings. You'd go and warm your hands, you know, and boy, they'd feel good and warm. And then you'd go back to work and your hands would get cold and, and they started getting slow and, and they wouldn't move well and you go warm up again. That's the way it is in our relationship with God. We need to spend time with God so that we are warm, so that we're tender, so that we're able uh, to serve God and that we please God and that we show God's presence in our life. 
a dear preacher of yesteryear. I'd never heard him preach in person, but heard many recordings of an old preacher by the name of Vance Havner. Uh, Vance Havner would preach out in Pasadena, California every year at the same time of the year. And uh, he was a lover of roses. And of course, in California, they had uh, many different kinds of, of roses and rose gardens. And they said that preacher Havner would go out early in the morning and he would pray among those uh, rose gardens. And he would walk up and down the rows and rows of, of uh, those flowers of those roses and then when it was time for the preachers to go to conference from uh, the motel and they would be gathered in the uh, motel lobby uh, they would say of uh, Vance Havner the preacher they would say boy you smell like a rose this morning I can tell where you have been the fragrance of the roses they showed in his uh, uh, in, 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 in his fragrance and, and they could tell, oh dear friend, we don't want to have the testimony uh, that our life is powerless because of living in sin or living in carnality or having all of our, all of our influences of the world. We want to be close to the God of heaven so that the presence and power of God is in our life and we don't lose that. I'll give you another one in the Bible. Uh, sadly, in Psalm 51, David had lost his song. Now, I don't know about you, uh, dear friend, but if I lost my song, it would be like losing uh, my life. I, 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 I'm not a singer, and uh, I admire those that are singers. Now, you say, preacher, I've heard you sing. Yeah, I sing because I can't help it, not because I can. I sing because of the joy of the Lord in my heart, and I love it. And, uh, but if I lost my song, I'd be in trouble. Uh, the psalmist in Psalm 51, the Bible tells us, because of his sin, he stayed home from battle. And uh, he looked and he lusted and he took a Bathsheba uh, and uh, he committed adultery with her. And because of his sin, uh, because of his sin, David lost his song. Many people today have no song because you can't live in sin and have the song of the Lord on your lips. When you have sin in your life... Oh, dear friend, when you have sin in your life, uh, things don't go well uh, in the Christian life. And David came before God in Psalm 51, and the Bible said he prayed and he cried, uh, Lord, cleanse me, uh, wash me thoroughly. He said, uh, take away my iniquity and uh, take away my sin, take away my transgression. And then he said this, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And then he said this, that my lips may sing. He had lost his song and he had asked God to give him his song back. I ask you tonight as I preach this evening, have you lost your song? Have you lost the joy of the Lord in your life? There are many stories in the Bible of things that are lost uh, so many times as we lose things around the house, we just we look for them till we find them. How many times have you said to your spouse, I, I can't find my phone, call me? And, of course, we, we, we've all probably said the same thing. I don't need to call you. I'm standing right here beside you. And your spouse would say, quit messing around. I need to find my phone. I want you to call it so it'll ring so I can hear it and find it. And we, we look for that. Sadly, many Christians have lost their song some months ago or some years ago, and you haven't gone looking for it. It'll change your life. Oh, to sing again. Oh, to have the song of the Lord. You don't have to be a great singer to have a song in your heart. I, I was preaching a few weeks ago, and I was reminded of an old song uh, that uh, my dad and my mom used to sing about how uh, that life can't be all blessing. It can't be all sunshine or the flowers would die. It can't be all good. That There has to be a balance. Uh, and, uh, and, and the song was about, thank you for the valley that I walked through today. I, sometimes I'll get a song in my heart and I'll sing it over and over. I'll sing it all day or I'll sing it two days or I'll sing it three days. Sometimes I'll sing a song till I get tired of that one. And I say, I can't quit singing that one song and I'll go to another one. Ah, oh, but dear friend, do you have a song in your heart? I don't want to lose my song. I don't want to lose it. We need the song of the Lord uh, in our life. And then uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the Bible tells us about Lot 
who lost his testimony. And not only did he lose his testimony, he lost his life. Now I want to say to you tonight as we go off the air in these last uh, a couple of minutes, I want to say, listen, God wants you to enjoy all of the benefits that come with salvation. Uh, he wants you to enjoy the benefit of his presence. He wants you to enjoy the benefits of his power. He wants you to enjoy the benefits of his fellowship. He wants you to enjoy the benefits of his song. Have you lost them? Have you lost those things? You ought to decide tonight. I'm going to find those things in my life. Whatever I have to do, if I have to confess my sin, if I have to spend time with God for an hour, I'm going to stay there until I get my song back, until I get my joy back. I sure appreciate you watching the program tonight. I'd love to have you come and be with us tomorrow here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church. These are the most exciting days in all of the history of our church. I mean, it's just exciting. You ought to come and experience the huge crowd of people, the great choir that will be singing in the morning, and all of the special music you will enjoy being with us here now at 1220 Brandon Road. 1220 Brandon Road. We're exactly in the middle between uh, Nicholasville Road and Harrodsburg Road, or you come straight out Clay's Mill and Clay's Mill Extended. I turn left on Brandon Road, and you'll see us right there, Clay's Mill Baptist Church, 1220 Brandon Road. Thank you so much for watching, and here is a great song you don't want to miss uh, as we go off the air tonight. The man of the street, the rich in their palaces, the poor and unlearned, soul in need of salvation and they all have to come to Calvary and I am so glad God saves old sinners I'm thrilled and amazed that he sets them free but the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that he would say an old sinner like me. Was I so bad that I needed forgiveness? Was I so wrong that I could not be free? I wasn't a thief, but I lived in sin's prison, and I was as lost as a sinner could be, and I am so glad God saves old sinners, I'm thrilled and amazed that he sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that he would save an old sinner like me, is that he would save an old sinner like me.